So, is this really surprising? Should we be surprised that pure mathematics works so well in allowing one to write down these general equations? Should we be surprised that Dirac guessed the right equation uh, for relativistic electrons? Or is actually, is there something psychological going on here? Is it something to do with our brains? Why, why, is, why is this working so well? Well, there have been several explanations put forward. Um, the first explanation, which I think is due to Dirac and Einstein, was the following one. It's that um, mathematicians invent mathematics to be beautiful, and that's the driving goal. They just want to create beautiful games that are interesting and fun. And maybe we only choose physical theories that are also beautiful. And maybe our concept of beauty is kind of limited. So we naturally arrive at the same kind of description. We look for beauty in the world. We look for beauty in mathematics. We don't have many, there's not much variation in what we find beautiful. So it's not, a, not surprising we end up with the same equations or simple equations describing the laws of nature. That's the kind of Dirac-Einstein explanation. The other explanation is, uh, is that um, if you do some experiments, you're a natural scientist, you do some experiments, you find connections between bits of the real world. And you're kind of limited. Our language is limited. Um, and so maybe what you do, well, you, you find that somebody else has looked at connections, mathematicians have looked at connections, and you just jump to the conclusion that these are roughly the same connections. So it's a kind of guesswork. It's just saying you've got limited imagination. We know some connections from mathematics. You discover some connections in the real world. Let's not be bothered. Maybe they're the same. This is an, this is an explanation that, uh, that Wigner himself gives in his essay. And another explanation, um, which uh, is due to somebody who, who uh, has been very influential in my life, my PhD advisor, he's written on this subject. He says, well, we're beings of finite intelligence uh, as humans. We're kind of very limited. Um, and so scientific progress is tied to the progress in our most sophisticated language, and that's mathematics. That's all we've got to describe the world. So it's no surprise that mathematicians go off. They invent some bit of pure mathematics. It's the only game in town. It's the only language we've got. So we simply sort of use that to describe the real world, whether that's a good thing or not. So these are kind of explanations that people come up with uh, to, describe, to, to explain this, uh, this seeming mystery. I don't believe any of these explanations, I have to say. Um, and here's the reason why. Um, it's that this is all well and good, but it ignores the fact that mathematics works amazingly, astonishingly, outrageously well in describing the real world. This isn't just some accident. If you do an experiment and you then compare it with some pre uh, prediction based on solving the equations of motions, equation, Newton's equation of motion or the equations of quantum mechanics or the equations of relativity or electromagnetism, it works amazingly well. So well, you can't tell the difference. It doesn't just seem that mathematics gives you a good approximation to the real world. The more we test our mathematical theories with experiment, the more it seems these mathematical theories are bang on correct. They capture an essential element of the real world. So it's not just an accident. It's not something in our brains. It really works, and it works to such an astonishing degree of accuracy any time it's tested, it works to you know, millionths of a percentage in accuracy if you're into quantum mechanics or relativity. Um, it works so well, this has to be more than an accident. It has to be more than just a coincidence, a limitation of language, a limitation of imagination. It has to tell us something of a deeper truth. So that's kind of the key point in Wigner's essay, in my view. And I think it's so beautiful. I think it's so wonderful. And it's such a mystery um, that. I've tried to explain it, but I don't feel I've done a terribly good job. Um, but I think you should think about it, and I think you should think for the rest of your lives about it, because I do think it's the most tremendous, tremendous subject to pon ponder. Well, I say that Wigner, uh, there's a twist in the tail of Wigner's essay. So you might think it's great that mathematics works so well. It should be comforting that mathematics works so brilliantly. Every time we try and apply mathematics to describe a new law of nature, it works on the nose. You find the right tools have been invented by some mathematician 20, 30, 50, 100 years earlier. So this should be a cause to celebrate. It should be a cause for jubilation. But Wigner had the opposite point of view. He said, maybe this is a sign of a problem. So what's the problem? Well, this really is surprising. This is beautiful. It's such a beautiful I missed this when I read this when I was 17. Completely missed this point. But actually now, I think it's the most interesting point. Uh, so Wigner's point was the following. 
precisely because mathematics describes the world so well in so many different situations, precisely because every time we need to describe a new law of nature, we look in the mathematical toolkit and, wow, there's the right tool, um, this should make us think that our description of the laws of nature is not, are not unique. It's not the only way we can do things. And Wigner gives another little, it's not really, again, a, a, it's wrong to call it a joke, because it's really not a joke. He gives another little example, which I think is very funny, actually, and I think is really lovely. And it, it requires you to think about it a little bit, but it's beautiful. So here's Wigner's example to show that there's really a problem here. So here's the game you play. There are 20 doors in front of me, and each door is locked. And I have a bag with 20 keys. And there are no labels on the keys, so I don't know which key fits in which door. So I walk up to the first door, and I close my eyes and pick a key at random. It's the right key. So I go through to the next door. I pick the next key at random. I put it in. It works perfectly. So I go through to the next door. Pick a key. Lo and behold, it's the right key every single time. Now, your conclusion from this would not be that I'm a genius at picking keys. Your conclusion from this would be, surely, that there's no unique connection between keys and doors. Maybe every key fits every door. I think that's stunning as a conclusion. And this was Wigner's point, that because mathematics works every time we apply it, maybe if we applied it slightly differently, we'd come up with an equally good theory using very different mathematics that would work just as well in describing the real world. And there's no way to rule this out. And this was Wigner's, the end point of Wigner's uh, essay. He says it's hard to rule out the possibility that actually, if Dirac had come along and guessed a, a completely different equation, not involving um, matrices, but involving some other weird mathematical, pure mathematical object, maybe that would have worked just as well. Just like the keys in the door worked every time. Maybe if you tried a different thing, it would have worked just as well. So maybe our physical theories are not unique. OK, well, that's where Wigner's essay ends. Now what I want to do is, is give you some of my own thoughts and thoughts of other people um, post-Wigner about this subject. But it's not settled. Nobody really understands this. And I repeat, maybe one of you people will. But you have to think about it long and hard for a long time. <laughs>